end-to-end integration with Microsoft's Office 365 apps. I love Microsoft. I love what they're doing with their cloud platform right now. There are so many amazing, powerful applications that they give you as part of your Office 365 subscription. You're probably not even using them. You probably didn't even know that they exist. And one of the best things about them is they integrate seamlessly from one to the other. For instance, a lot of people out there are using Apple right now for their home devices. Why? Because it integrates so perfectly from one app to the next. You pull up a text message on your phone, it shows up on your MacBook. You've got iTunes on your phone, it's there on your Apple TV. Microsoft is doing the same thing for the business, and there's a bunch of applications out there that we can use and leverage to do a bunch of really cool things. I wanted to walk you through one of those scenarios right now. So what I'm going to cover in this nugget is using, first of all, Microsoft Forms to build a fillable form where we can take survey data or vote information on a public website. The next thing I'm going to use is Microsoft Flow, their automation tool that integrates all of Microsoft's applications together. What Flow does is when something happens in one Microsoft app, trigger an action in a different Microsoft app. For instance, if I get an email that has an attachment and it shows up in Outlook, Flow can capture that and automatically download it to my OneDrive. Or the flip side of it is if I put something in OneDrive, Flow can listen for that and automatically trigger an email notification through Outlook. Really cool. So in this case, we're going to be capturing data from forms. We're going to use Flow to capture that data and push it to Power BI in a live streaming data set. So we're going to have, as the votes come in or as the results come in, the dashboard will update automatically. And lastly, I'm going to embed that into Microsoft Teams so that we can share this in a private hosted environment where we're chatting and collaborating on the data set. Let's get going. So you log in to Office 365 at office.com and you're greeted with this very typical Office 365 splash page where it puts the applications in front of you that you know and love and regularly use. But what I'm actually referring to is these applications that you don't know about. We're gonna click on Explore All Apps right here. And as we scroll down, you can see there's actually a ton of things that are available to us. It's really, really cool. I love Power Apps and I love Planner. And we can talk about those some other time because today I want to start by building a form. Let's click on Forms and it logs us straight in. And of course, what we're here to do is we're here to create a new form. It's going to greet us with this splash page. I can click on X and you can see what it normally looks like. And it's, look, this is pretty straightforward, right? We're going to create a new form. And we're going to give this form a title. Let's call this CBT Nuggets. Oop. And we're going to back this out. Let's clean this up. CBT Nuggets form. And we're going to enter a description. And we'll just say this is a demo. Something that's really cool is you can actually insert an image by just a Bing search. So if I actually search for something like CBT Nuggets, we'll see what pops up. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff that pops up. Hey, that's look at the little nuggets. That's the guy I want to insert. Let's add that. And now we have a cool little CBT Nuggets. All right, let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is what kind of question do we want to ask? Do we want to have a text field? I'll say, yeah, let's do a text field. We'll say, what is your job title? And we can say, this is fine. We'll just leave it like that. We'll say, okay, we got it. Cool. Great. There's our first question. It's already in place. Let's add another question. And let's say, let's give this a choice and say, do you like this idea? And we'll say option one. And look, it actually automatically prompts us, do you want to have a yes, no, and maybe? We'll say add all, and it gives us a yes, no, and maybe. That's great. Look, this is, this is pretty straightforward. And what you don't know is it's also going to capture the name, email address, and the time of day that these responses were tallied. So that's really cool if you want to actually track who is responding and at what time. But we don't have to do that in this case. We just got these two questions here, and I am perfectly fine with that. And you can see right here in the top right, as we're going along, it automatically saves our progress as we're going. We can, of course, do a preview. We can change the theme. I'm okay with the way things are going right now. So I'll just hit share. And look at that. It generates the link right there for us. I'm going to go ahead and copy this out and put it on a text file for now. Let's just go ahead and place it right in there because it's kind of long. We're going to want to shorten this up with, you know, a bit.ly uh, URL later, but we're just going to hang on to it for just the moment. But if you do need validation that this is up and running, we can, of course, paste that form into the URL right here, press enter, 
and you can see it loads up the form that our end users are going to be seeing and answering. For instance, I'll go ahead and answer it. I'll say trainer, and I love this idea. I'll say yes and submit. There we go. It has recorded the response. So the next step we want to do is we want to use Microsoft Flow to integrate with the other applications. But before we do that, before we can use Flow, we need to set up Power BI so that it's ready to accept the data from Flow when it comes in. Let's go ahead and get logged into Power BI at powerbi.microsoft.com. And we'll say sign in and it signs us right in. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm gonna use my workspaces. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. What we're looking to do is we're looking to create a streaming data set. So what we need to do is we're gonna click create streaming data set. And this is gonna be coming from an API. Let's go ahead and say next. And what do we wanna name our data set? Let's call this survey results. And this is literally asking us what were the questions and the types of answers that we were getting from our survey results? For instance, we had job title, and that was a text field. And then we had something like a good or bad. Do you like this idea? Good, bad, yes, no. And we'll say that's, that's really it. That's all we need. Now, this next part, this is important. We have to turn on historic data analysis in order for us to be able to generate reports based on this data. So I've got job title, good, bad, yes or no. This is going to be a new streaming data set from the API. I'll go ahead and click create. And it creates my data set. Here's a push URL just in case we want to hang on to that. We don't need it because Flow will automatically know what the data set is based on our login from O365. That's right. It's perfectly seamless and in integrating with each other. I'm going to go ahead and click done here. And we're ready to go back to Flow. So I'm going to go back to my Office 365 login where all these apps were. And I'm going to click on Flow. And you can see right off the bat, it gives you a ton of templates and things like save Office 365 email attachments to OneDrive. <laughs> Sounds familiar, huh? What we're going to do is we're going to click on My Flows, and we're going to be creating our own custom flow from scratch. So let's say New Flow from Blank. And we're going to say Create from Blank. And here we go. What kind of connectors and triggers are we starting from? Well, our starting point was Microsoft Forms. So if I type in Forms, you can see it gives us a bunch of starting points to pick from. I'm going to choose Forms. And we'll say, OK, I got it. That's good. And we're going to say the trigger is when a new response is submitted. We're going to go ahead and just click on that. Oh, it tells us sign in to create a connection to Microsoft Forms. There we go. It automatically signs us in because it knows who we are. Let's pick a form, and it knows, look right there, it automatically picked up our CBT Nuggets form that I created. Great. So the next step that we're going to do, let's go to forms again. And the action is get the response details. So do you see what's happening here? When a new response is submitted, get the details of that response. I'll say got it. So let's click on that. Now we're going to pick on the form ID again. Now, this part gets a little tricky. This is the only hairy part in the whole process. So I promise, just follow along with me here. We're going to get through this. What we have to do on the right-hand side, you see this little pop-up box here. It says dynamic content or expression. We're going to choose expression. And then over here in the response ID, we're going to be typing in this kind of nasty expression. But I promise, just follow along with me. It's going to work. The expression reads like this. It is going to be first, open parentheses, trigger, body with a capital B, open and close parentheses, question mark, open bracket, open single quote, value, close single quote, close bracket, close parentheses, question mark, open bracket, open single quote, resource, data with a capital D, close single quote, close bracket, question mark, open bracket, open single quote, response, capital I, lowercase d, single quote, bracket. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it over here in the expression and then click OK. 
and you can see it converts it to the expression. Now the last part is it's it's notice that when we've gotten a response submitted, get the details of each of those responses. Now we need to tell it to send it to Power BI. So to do that, we need to tell it to make to perform this action for each and every response. So what I have to do is I have to search for the word each and it says apply to each. I'm going to go ahead and give that a click and you can see now, okay, what do you want to do when we're applying this to each and every response? I'm going to search for Power BI. Oops, I'm sorry. We're going to be doing this based on the list of responses, which is noticed right here on the right hand side. That's great. The output from the previous steps is going to be the list of responses. The action is going to be to apply this to Power BI. Let's go ahead and now search for Power BI. There we go. Add rows to a data set. That was the streaming data set that we created previously. Let's go ahead and say, hey, my workspace was my workspace. The data set that we were working with was my survey results data set. The table is always called real-time data. And as soon as you connect, you can see it's got this job title and good, bad, yes, no. Those are the columns that we created, remember? Now all I have to do is click in the space, and it asks you which questions do you want to fill this in with. So, of course, the job title was what is your job title? And the good, bad, yes, no was do you like this idea? That's it. Let's click save, and now our flow is up and running. Let's go back to my flows. Let's say, okay, check it out. The my flows is now up and running. It's ready to go. Let's go ahead and answer that quiz data a couple more times and see if we can generate some data. We'll go ahead and say my job title was not a trainer. How about that? Do you like this idea? Maybe. Let's generate something new. And let's do it one more time and let's say my job title was make something up like systems admin. Do you like this idea? No, systems admins don't like this idea. Let's say submit. Okay, so a couple responses have been triggered. So we should expect to see this in Power BI now. Let's hop over to Power BI and see. We've got Power BI fired up and we are logged in. And of course, if you are interested in learning more about Power BI, definitely check out the course we have dedicated to nothing but Power BI here at CBT Nuggets, the Analyzing and Visualizing Data with Power BI, the 70-778 certification exam. This, If all of this stuff is new to you, that course will help you get really, really familiar with it. What we're doing is we are getting data, and this time we are getting data from the Power BI data set service. Let's go ahead and click connect and we're choosing my workspace because we know that's where the survey results were. Let's hit load and check it out. There's our columns. It should be streaming in. What we need to do though is take account of these of this data, right? So let's first go ahead and create a new measure and we'll give this measure a name like count data, something like that. We'll say count and we'll just say the name of the job type. We'll just count job titles. That should be good. All right, so we have some two votes tallied so far. Let's go ahead and change this to maybe a pie chart, and let's dice it up by whether or not they thought this was a good idea. Ah, one no, one maybe. That sounds okay. And now let's actually do some more with the job titles. I think this will be really cool if we import from Marketplace and do like an art scatter plot, something like the word cloud. That's what I'm thinking of. Let's hit add. And now we've got the word cloud. Let's go ahead and add that to the visualization and just say the job titles there. Check it out. So as we share the survey link and this data more and more people answer the survey i should expect to see this visualization changing on the fly so what we're going to do i'm going to publish this first to the public internet so that we can just see what it looks like as we go let's just go ahead and give this a, a name let's say public internet and it's publishing awesome i'll say got it and when I hop back over to Power BI, I should now expect to go to my workspaces, choose reports, and we should now be able to see this visualization here in the public internet. I'll go ahead and create a shareable link here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create shortened links for both the survey 
and the dashboard so that you can answer the survey, then come to the dashboard and see how it's changed over time. Now, the very last part I promised you was embedding this into Teams. For instance, let's say I wanted my engineering team to be able to see this data whenever they fire up Teams, they wanted it to see it live streamed in. All I have to do is click the plus. We'll choose Power BI that we're gonna embed on a new tab. Let's just go ahead and change this survey results or something. We'll call that the name of the tab will be survey results. We've got my workspace selected. Public internet was the report. I'll hit save. Check it out. We now have our dashboard embedded straight into Teams. That is end-to-end -end integration with the Microsoft Cloud Platform. These are apps you're probably not even using, apps that you didn't know about that you should. How amazing is it? It wasn't that hard, right? Four major apps covered here in this nugget, and we have something really, really cool to show for it. Now, go ahead and get to those surveys and results. Hit those links in the bottom here so that we can actually change the data and see how it changes over time. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.